So the first thing we're going to do is go to the product setup page. We'll select new for new product. From here you can set a new ID. We'll call it two. Set a unique name. We'll call it cylinder. And then you put in the dimensions of the part. So this one, our dimensions are about 93.5 in height and then 33.4 in diameter. So diameter was 33.4 height, 93.5. I don't think the plus sign really matters in there. Um, you can select what the workpiece type is, if it's a cylinder, a tube, a rectangle. Uh, and you got this nice little preview here of, of what the part is that you're, you're going to do. Next one is your gripper type on the robot. So on our robot, we're going to select double gripper. It'll ask you to select the TCP of gripper one. So we have a centric gripper on one, and the length of it is 20. So we'll select that. We're, it's going to ask us what direction we're gripping the, the part from. We're going to say out because we're gripping it on the outside. For two, we're going to select gripper two. Uh, same thing from the outside. So those are pre-configured grippers. Yeah. And if you wanted to, you go in here and create a new one, centric, and then you can give it like TCP, say three. And then you can give it your J1 is basically just the length of the gripper, okay. of the gripper finger. And it shows you right there from the faceplate of the um, of the chunk uh, cylinder itself to the tip of the finger. Um, so we'll say oh, so that. So it's all based on a particular chunk model. Um, it's just from the faceplate, so not necessarily a chunk model. It's just that's where the where the TCP is okay so this one will say it's 35 Oop, not that big and then the, um, the size around is gonna be like 80 I think is what the is what the gripper is on this one you enter um, out we'll save it Centric 2, TCB1, Centric 2. So here it's going to ask you how the product is placed on the, um, on the, on the sheet itself. So in our case, it's going to be vertically, vertically put on there. On this screen, it asks you how you want to define where that, what that grid looks like. Uh, and you can do it from importing a DXF file. So we can say this one. How do you get that DXF file on on the computer? computer? Just USB. Oh, so like open the cabinet up, put your USB in there, save it. Yep. So this is one that I had pre-created before. Um, That's cool, because you're going to use a DXF to cut the sheet anyways. Exactly, yeah. So then somehow it knows that inside the circles is your pick points? Yep. So um, well, let's go back real quick. So GR tray updated. So that's your fiducial right there. Mm -hmm. And then we had our minimum, our maximum part diameter was, what was that? 33.4. 33.4. So for the minimum, I always go a couple less. So we'll say 31. Maximum, we'll say 35. Your separator is just the thickness of that plate. Usually it's about three. Um, and then you can say apply. And it'll give us a DLL. Um, that place. Okay. Updated. Cancel. This file should not be the cat. Doesn't like that cat file. Had another one. That's the wrong one, I believe, though. Maybe not. So it's basically going to take that and apply it to there. There we go. Oh, that's cool. So then, in the software, it's basically 
from that fiducial that we taught in the user frame, it's going to go through and it's going to have the coordinates for the center of each of those circles. And that's essentially all that's all that it's updating in the position register on the robot. Cool. So that's the easy way of doing it. Um, you can apply it. This is a slightly harder way of doing it, but you can manually enter oh, like okay. the position. Basically, you're going to start out defining that position right there, and then and that's going to be you'll use the kind of the diagram up here to say um, the spacing to that center hole is X, and then the spacing between the parts is X1, and then the number of parts that you have per row per column. So you're basically just defining the grid in that way. And then when I when I do it this way, I usually I usually um, adjust the X1 and the Y1, and I'll just keep going towards the part until the robot's perfectly in line with it. Oh, I see. Just adjust it and then um, and then figure out what my furthest distance is, and then I'll divide it by whatever the number of part mm -hmm. parts is, and then same thing for this, and then you're, you're like spot on. Oh, that's cool. With each of those. And then how does, how does this transmit the data to the robot specifically? So does it just create a table of all of those 54 position registers and then feeds the robot that register whenever so it asks for? Or does it not, fill them all up? How it, does that? So basically each time you um, finish, complete a task, so say you pick a part, right? Yep. Um, there's a there's a register in here that you say okay I'm done with that task and then it'll send you another task. Oh okay. And then anytime you go to pick a part, it updates the tray pick position which is PR thirteen. Oh okay. It'll update that. Same thing with place. It'll update that. Um, and then so each time it goes to a pick call or it goes to a place call. Ooh, that's nice. Or it goes to like a flex call. Um, which is basically pick and place. It oh. updates. It updates those registers. So, huh. um, That's cool. So we can fly. Oh, go back here. <laughs> um, load separator open. Fly creates that. Fly. On our next one. So our next one, we're gonna define the process. So the process is going to be like if you're doing two CNCs, um, if you're doing two CNCs in a rotate station, um, we'll just say for this one we're just going to do a single CNC. That's a single CNC, single op. Okay. You can preview it. Um, this is just going to generate kind of a dummy program. Floor count, five floors, ten parts per floor. You can generate it. It's going to tell you it's going to start a new floor. It's going to pick a part. It's going to load the CNC, it's going to pick another part, then it's going to swap out the CNC, and then this flex is the pick and place in the cube box. So it's basically going to pick, place a part, pick a part, mm -hmm. swap CNC, place a part, pick a part, and it's just, this is the task that it's just generating that is going to get sent to the robot. So it's just a good way to double check, see if this is kind of the process that you're looking for. Okay. So if we go, say, like two CNC's, preview it, generate it, it's going to pick apart, load CNC1, pick apart, load CNC2, pick apart, swap CNC1, place, pick, swap CNC2, so you can kind of tell what, what the process is going to be. So in our case we'll just do this one, select, that puts it up here. So. You have a couple. You have a couple of things that you can define here. So our DZ is basically going to be the offset from the top of the um, plate. So I usually start that out at like 25. Um, you select the gripper that you're going to pick it with, TC, TCP1, and then you go to CNC. So this is where you can select CNC1, CNC2. If you've got like an outfeed station, something like that. So we'll do CNC1 select um, the offset values 
So when we go and teach that first position, we'll just plug them in here. Oh, okay. And then this will always get sent to the to the robot every single time. Every time we run this program, it'll send those coordinates to the robot. Um, same thing for the unload. If there's a different station you're unloading it from or something, you put the offset values in there. So you also define, uh, we already defined our TCP1, TCP2, um, you can also define part dimensions and stuff. I usually just leave that blank and I change the Z value. Um, and then your put, say how much you want to, how high you want to drop the part. I usually start out at 10 and then you're going to do it with gripper 2. You can also change the... So you always pick with gripper 1. Always drop with gripper out 2. Of the, out of the tray and you always... Load with gripper 2. Load with... Unload. Unload with gripper 2. If you've got a different process that you want to do, oh, mileage fine. may vary. Uh, you can also define the um, nut and foot for the robot here as well. Oh, okay. Do you know what that means? Yeah, the elbow. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always like to apply, apply, finish. Off the top of my head, didn't tell you which one means what. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're ready to run the product, you come here to work, we do load, select the process you want to load, to run, then you can do the placement. We've got five drawers, you can do it like this, where you select each drawer, start the placement, you can select all and it'll fill all of them, apply, apply, and it does all 270 parts, or you can, come on. You can clear all. I like to apply it after I've done that. And, or you can, and you can. Do like an individual. Like that. Um, something that we learned is it remembers the order that you punch them in this way. Oh, so if you punch oh. them in one, two, three, four, five. It'd be all over the place. It'd be all over the place. So it doesn't just <laughs> go from the first one to whatever the last one is. That's cool. Um, apply well, it. Sort of. It's cool and not at the same time. Play. Fall in there. Yeah. Kind of sad. smaller phone. Sorry. <laughs> Compensating. That's what the other grippers for. It's to reinforce <laughs> both of <laughs> them. What the heck is happening now? What'd you do? Broke something. My, it's my job. What are you doing? <laughs> Work. Load. Respect. Apply. Puts them up there. You're only doing the top drawer. Then you do abort. Reset. Run. So this abort reset run is for the RoboCam software. This starts sending tasks to the robot, which is separate from the robot abort reset run, which is robot control right here. Oh. So if we look at register um, 110, 110 is a scenario number. So I have a sheet that tells you what each of the scenarios that are programmed in there are. One is picked from cube box to his place. Okay. Um, so it'll send you a task here. Basically how the programming works is once it completes that task, this task approved, the robot will set to zero. says load CNC1, so that's the next task. Scenario number changes. Once the robot finishes that task, it sets it to zero. And then it says pick again, same thing. Swap, now it goes to six. 
and you can see up, up here it also echoes what's being sent down here. That's cool. So, and you also get your pick PRs and your put PRs as well. That's pretty cool. It's all done through the either the flags to control the I.O. or um, just updating registers and position registers through the PC interface. Hmm. Awesome. That's cool. No Ethernet IP? Cool. Um, some other stuff. Under settings, if you cycle power on the robot and RoboCam is still up, it's going to lose connection. So if you go back it'll and you try to like open and close drawers, it's not going to be connected anymore. So just go to connection, connection settings, disconnect, reconnect, and then it refreshes it. Oh, okay. I'm assuming if you just close RoboCam and open it back up, it would also be safe. As long as your auto connect at startup is on, is enabled. That's What else does it do? Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you have your I.O. control here. It's basically just taking the place of a PLC to send in tasks. So you can have that. You have your alarm log, which you can read the alarms that are on the robot, teach pendant. Oh, that's cool. Oh, man, that'd be nice. I'm working on getting them to add in user alarms to that as well. So all the user alarms that I defined on there also pop up. Cool. Yep. What does robot control do? Oh yeah, that's, that's just the play and then you can mess with the speed it looks like. Mm -hmm. And that updates on the pendant mm -hmm. automatically. Yep. Um, the home button I have programmed in, so like if it's Jesus, if it's sitting in front of the machine door and you got to get in there or something like that, you can press the home button. It'll go back home and then it'll it'll stop. Oh, okay. Um, so basically, at the top of every task, I have a check in there for it. So. Okay. And then if it's inside a machine, does it find its way home? If it's inside a machine, or you, you got to drive it out manually. If it's inside a machine and you abort reset run, it'll go into the recovery task and it'll backwards itself out. Oh, so uh -huh. there's some programming involved in that. But. Cool.